Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site, bettingangle.us, a free site. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Bear with me, I see my lips aren't quite synced to the audio. We'll just work through the video. Well, Oscar De La Hoya announced that he's going to return to the ring. And... He wants to fight Floyd Mayweather. Now Mayweather might have other contractual obligations, right? But I have a hard time believing that these two Hall of Famers aren't going to find a way to make it into the ring sometime. Oscar was great in his prime. Blew through Julio Cesar Chavez in a way that, quite frankly, very few did. Right? Oscar also beat some other people we forget about now. Hernando Hernandez was an excellent fighter. Right? Oscar beat Ike Quarte. Uh, that was a dramatic fight. These were huge names in Oscar's prime. I personally feel that Oscar beat Felix Trinidad. But the judges, of course, weren't as kind. I thought Oscar in the rematch beat Sugar Shane Mosley, I understand no one agrees with me on that fight. Okay, fair enough. Oscar, of course, beat El Faros. Fernando Vargas, Oscar has a very long resume, several spectacular knockouts, several spectacular must-win rounds, where Oscar rose to the occasion. Great fighter. But let's be clear here, and I know this is going to sound brutal. Right, But understand, the guys who are able to continue on, and I know Mike Tyson was able to flip this, but the guys who have been able to continue on are guys who kept themselves in great shape, finished their careers with some modicum of success, right? had great defense, great defense, and of course, had power in both hands. That's what Tyson had that really was a difference maker. Let's be real, too, on Tyson's comeback fight against Roy Jones Jr. Roy Jones Jr. was badly faded, right? Roy Jones stopped being Roy Jones a very long time ago. Right? Let's just say that the quick reflexes uh, still had the left hook, power's the last to go. But the quick reflexes, the idea that Roy Jones could go through a round without being hit, which is what happened in the, Pazienza, the Vinny Pazienza fight, that's a distant memory. Let's also keep in mind, too, that while both guys were heavyweight champ, Mike Tyson was the real heavyweight champ. Roy Jones was a visitor at heavyweight, right? And so when they had their reunion fight, I don't care what the weights were at the time of the reunion, Mike Tyson was the person who felt more comfortable getting hit with big shots than Roy Jones Jr. Well, Oscar De La Hoya really faded badly at the end of his career. And I mean badly. He used to have great legs. Revisit the last three rounds of his fight against Felix Trinidad. I know the judges didn't give him the rounds. They should have. If you're in a movement, if you're in a feints, if you're into a guy making his opponent look robotic, making his opponent look stationary, those last three rounds will show you that De La Hoya, who had a lethal left hand, he threw what was called a 45, right? Lethal left hand. De La Hoya was inverted. He was a southpaw fighting as a righty, so that left hand was his lead hand. But De La Hoya also could box you, and he could move, right? Let's remember, too, the De La Hoya-Floyd fight is one of Floyd's closest fights, my point in this video is to argue that that De La Hoya no longer exists. Now, of course, he can come back and he can beat some 
non-boxers, right? MMA guys look great in MMA. That's a different discipline. So if a Conor McGregor decides he's going to try more boxing, and if he were to take on De La Hoya, I'd take De La Hoya in that fight, but it's an interesting fight. Right? It's an interesting fight. I could see Conor McGregor winning that fight. But the problem is De La Hoya is talking about taking on all-time greats. Floyd Mayweather, for example. Let's remember, folks, Mayweather leaves the ring unbeaten. Mayweather had great defense. While Mayweather got roughed up a little bit by Castillo the first time they fought, there's no Mayweather fight that looks as bad as Oscar De La Hoya's loss to Manny Pacquiao. Let's remember, too, that De La Hoya reached a point where he was fighting guys who were physically smaller than him. Right? Steve Forbes was a guy De La Hoya fought to keep his career going. Let's remember, too, that De La Hoya had some problems outside of the brain. Right? De La Hoya, you know, used some recreational drugs, according to reports. He neglected his fitness. Right? Now, I know some people are going to say, hey, isn't Mike Tyson lighting up and stuff like that? I thought Mike looked great against Roy Jones. Mike is two-handed. That's the other thing, right? Mike's on his front foot going to Roy Jones's body. He's two-handed. It would have been a different fight if Mike's one-handed, which really is what De La Hoya is, right? Understand, De La Hoya has a lethal left hook. Left 45, we'll call it, right? It's lethal. But De La Hoya, who had great legs and that lethal punch, didn't really have the right hand to keep you pinned on the ropes like Mike Tyson was able to keep Roy Jones pinned on the ropes. So understand, I, um, I'm hearing that De La Hoya is coming back. I think ego is a very hard thing to get control of. Right? I think all of us struggle with it from time to time. I'm sure De La Hoya looks at some of these fighters, and I know privately he must be thinking, man, I can beat this guy. You got to be kidding. Right? The problem is Father Time eventually beats all of us. So I'm curious. I know Canelo had a bad breakup with Oscar De La Hoya. Right? I'm sure there's some current fighters. De La Hoya feels he... If he can land that 45, could dust off, right? But make no mistake, when you start to think that De La Hoya didn't end his career in poor form, just turn on the Manny Pacquiao-De La Hoya fight. I know he's weight drained for that fight, but folks, the legs are gone, the reflexes are gone, the hand speed is gone. Now, I'll agree. Boxing history has some guys who were able to fight well into their later years, right? Bernard Hopkins, who's good friends with De La Hoya, right? Business partner of De La Hoya's. Um, Archie Moore. Now, keep in mind, Hopkins always had great defense. Hopkins, by his own admission, didn't eat a donut for a number of years. You're talking about a major health nut. Major health nut. Right? Archie Moore. You're talking about great defense, right? You know, hands like this. Archie Moore had great defense. Archie Moore was two-handed. Archie Moore hit like a Mack truck later in his career. Right? I would argue that even though Archie had some rough and tumble fights, right? He gets decked by Rocky Marciano, for example. There's a fight where Archie hits the canvas several times against a Canadian fighter. I forget the guy's name. Well, even though Archie had some tough fights, you never got the feeling that Archie was neglecting his health. 
He's always in shape, right? And his defense is a constant. It, it was unorthodox. It was George Foreman's defense, right? Foreman trained with Archie more later in life. Archie was a bit of a trainer later in life, right? George Foreman was able to keep it going again because George Foreman had great defense, right? Great defense. And George Foreman never relied on hand speed. So this wasn't a case where, you know, he got older, his hand speed slowed down, and suddenly he didn't know what to do. George Foreman always had a great jab. So he was able to make it work. Style-wise, I don't think Oscar De La Hoya is going to be able to. Right? So, let's see who Oscar's opponent is. I understand, too, that these guys may have been sparring privately. Right? Oscar, very successful guy, head honcho of Golden Boy Promotions. I'm sure he's in the ring with sparring partners, professionals, etc. Right? I don't know how many times I can say this. Sparring is different than a main event. Right? It just is. I get the feeling if you put Oscar in the ring with the wrong opponent, he could have a very hard time. I know there's a size gap between Oscar these days and Floyd Mayweather, but I would expect Mayweather to be able to dust off Oscar, right? Mayweather's left hook was hair trigger the last time I saw him in the ring, right? Don't be fooled by the Mayweather who comes out and wants to give the fans some money's worth who lets Conor McGregor hit him for several rounds. That's Floyd playing games. That's Floyd being a businessman. Right? Don't be fooled by that guy. Understand, too, there's a big difference between fighting Conor McGregor in his first boxing match and fighting a former rival who is still a rival. Right? Understand, Mayweather has Mayweather promotions, Oscar has Golden Boy promotions. There have been times when these guys haven't exactly been friendly to each other in the press. So I'm guessing, you know, you saw Mike Tyson and Roy Jones, and they're smiling, and you get the feeling these guys are boys off camera. <laughs> right? There's a respect there. There isn't a competition. It's more like, you know, two older guys going at it. They respect each other. You know, they both travel the same roads. They both were the baddest man on the planet for a period of time. There's a certain brotherhood there. I don't care if Oscar were to get in his 70s and Floyd were in his 70s. I believe there's always going to be some competition there. It's a different animal altogether. Right? I'm sure Oscar privately feels that he beat Floyd. I can tell you, I was in the sports book of the MGM. Right? They were announcing the rounds. Right, The fight was taking place at the, I believe it was the MGM Garden Arena. I can tell you, after the fight ended, fans streamed into the sports book. The Oscar De La Hoya betters were upset. They were very upset. The mood changed from Mardi Gras party to people being upset, feeling that the fix was in. Right? One of those people who may have felt that he was robbed was Oscar De La Hoya, probably. Right? So, if Floyd and Oscar fight each other, we can call it an exhibition. They can tell us that the guys are just there to give us some rounds and some entertainment. Right? I'm just telling you, I get the feeling that Floyd's going to be serious. I get the feeling that Oscar's going to be serious. Both guys are going to be flashing left hooks. The difference is Mayweather has kept himself in shape. I don't care if Mayweather's been hanging out in strip clubs and all this other stuff. Mayweather's kept himself in shape. Sometimes you watch these boxing shows and you see Mayweather training some young lion and you just get the feeling that Mayweather is all in. He's not the executive in the ivory tower. He's actually there in the gym with fighters. And Mayweather, let's just be real, has always had the better defense than Oscar. Mayweather beat him the first time. 
I would expect the second time to probably end earlier. Right? It's a free country. Oscar can come back if he wants. Great. I believe these iconic guys don't have enough no men around them. Nobody wants to tell them no. So I'm guessing Oscar looks across the room. He says, guys, I think I can come back. And people who are remembering that last paycheck they got from Oscar, <laughs> the one that Oscar signed in front of, they're afraid to tell him, hey, dude, I don't think that's a good idea, right? The person who says that gets shown the door, right? So I'm not sure if Oscar's getting the best of advice right now. I don't begrudge anyone who wants to come back. I don't think these guys need the money. I understand, you know, a portion of the Tyson purse was given to charity and stuff like that. I think it's more about ego. It's more about unresolved issues, right? That Oscar lost to Floyd's probably itching Oscar, has been for years, right? The problem, though, is Oscar now's in his late 40s. He was a faded fighter in his late 30s, right? Right? I don't see how this ends well. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. If you feel I'm being unfair here, if you feel the whole thing's a hoax, right, that the judges know they're going to call it a draw. <laughs> Oscar hits the canvas three or four times, right? Okay, fine. But I actually do feel that these fighters are very conscious about their legacies. These are very proud men. They never want to be embarrassed. Understand, Oscar has spent the last decade being big man on campus, right? Building a company. He's the head of it. He's meeting with fighters. They want to sign with his company because they know Oscar's a Hall of Famer. Oscar's a great fighter. Oscar can guide them and stuff like that, right? When you build a reputation over years, when you have an image, when you have a persona, I don't think these guys want to flippantly throw it away in some post-retirement fight. I think Oscar's comeback, he's going to make it a serious one. He's going to try to be as serious as possible. But the problem is, again, Father Time beats all of us. And at the end of his career, it looked to me like his legs were gone, Looked to me like, let's just say he looked like Oscar, but was no longer Oscar. Right? And um, I don't get the feeling that he's been as dedicated in keeping himself in shape as Floyd Mayweather seems to be. I take Mayweather big in that fight. That's how I see it. Against Conor McGregor, let me say this. Conor actually has some skills. We know Connor has punching power, right? We know that. Connor has a learning curve. I'm sure Connor has picked up some things after the Floyd fight and probably would be better, right? But again, I keep saying, I believe boxing is a different sport, different sport than MMA. Right? So, you know, at a certain odds point, I'd think about putting some money on Connor against De La Hoya, right? I'm not putting any money on Connor against Floyd Mayweather. I wouldn't even think about Connor against Mike Tyson. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.